Over the course of 19 runs, I've learned a lot about Elden Ring. There are some bosses you can cheese, some places you should never go, and some strategies that are straight up just better than others. Some of these builds ended up being major disappointments, like Sans and Edward Elric. Some have been surprisingly strong, like Leo and Leo, huh. I'm only at 19 characters and I've already made two Leos. These surprises are because I'm always aiming at the top bar. So what if I aimed for the middle? What if I let fate decide my stats and my skill determine everything else? It would have to balance out to an average build, right? On my quest to find the most fun build in Elden Ring, I ran through the game and rolled the dice every time I leveled up. If you want to watch these runs live, follow me on Twitch. We're going to find new ways to run through Elden Ring all the time. If you wanted to give me some money, follow me on Patreon. And if you want me to start the video, let's get it started at the very beginning. It's a very good place to start. Now it's nothing like when it began. With the character creation process, I tried to use the similar face function to create a randomized monster, but it kept randomizing itself back to normal. That's disappointing. So instead, I rolled a die for the hairstyle, then cranked some stuff up and some stuff down, alternating between high and low. Cool. He looks like an NFT monkey. Oh no. Nobody right click my character. I will talk to a lawyer. We're starting as a wretch, putting us at 10 in every stat and total level one. While the ornamental straight swords were solid in the Leonardo run, they kind of fell off at the end. So instead of fighting Grafted Scion for them, I fall off myself. I fall off the cliff. Into Limgrave. Grab the crafting kit for pickles later, pick up a horse from the Emerald Herald, and a wet blade to apply Ashes of War. Pretty important. The biggest tip I can give to new Elden Ring players is find an Ash of War that kicks ass and spam the hell out of it. Since our stats are pretty low at the moment, we need some weapons with low stat requirements. There's a really good one in the Weeping Peninsula, the Morning Star. We used it early in the Edelgard run for for a hammer with a bleed property. Technically, we're two strength short of the requirements, but by two-handing weapon, we get a 50% strength boost for 15 strength. Then we grab the dog shield from the Leonardo run, which will boost our stamina recovery by 8%, even when it's just on our back. That means we don't need the stat requirements for it. While we're in the Weeping Peninsula, let's scoop up a golden seed, a sacred tear, and the flame of frenzy spell from the Leophodia run. There's a pretty good chance that we're gonna end up with a split of everything pretty even. So the frenzied flame seal, which scales with strength dexterity Faith and Intelligence is probably the best seal in the game. Two more Sacred Tears, then we're out of the Peninsula. The Strength Physic Tier will boost our Strength by 10 points for two minutes. It's a little control that helps us deal a bit of damage as well. Not that we needed it to get Alexander out of the hole, finishing his quest will eventually give us the Weapon Arch Boosting Talisman. For now, we need another Talisman to fill out our slot, so into the High Road Cave. I grabbed the Sham Shear, which we used in the Moon Knight build before farming. If we end up with a bunch of Dexterity, dual wielding Curved Swords would be a good strategy but we're really here for the Guardian Golem, an easy boss that drops a great talisman for early game, the Blue Dancer Charm. The lower your equipment load, the higher the damage from this charm. So if you take off your pants and jacket, you're in for a good time. If you couldn't tell, we're just kind of grabbing a bunch of options so that whatever happens with our random stats, we'll have a tool we're ready to use. That's why I bodied the Tibia Mariner in case we wanted to use beast incantations, or just incantations in general later. Nearby, we pop into the third Church of America for the Physic Flask, and the healing tier isn't good so I ran to the Minor Erdtree for the Stamina and Charge Attack Boosting Physic Tears instead. I love the game design here. It teaches you to get the Physic Tear Flasks from the bottom of Minor Erdtrees, encouraging new players to seek those out. Then it'll hit them with a boss fight later. The rest of them have a boss fight, but you know there will be a reward. Great game, great design. Now we're gonna get a number one victory royale. Yeah, Fort Height, we bout to get down. Two bosses on the board right now, Bloody Slash, then Grey Old Town. Got the Memory Stone now. I jump up, then I jump down. Now we're on the Limb Grave beach, grab the pickle slash the dragon feet. This is the biggest drop of levels in the whole run. I pulled up a D8 on Google so everyone can see my rolls. I know that online die rollers are frowned upon in the Dungeons and Dragons community, but I'm an Elden Ring YouTuber now. I can do whatever I want. It might seem obvious, but the ones are going to be vigor, twos are mind, threes are endurance, fours are strength, fives are dex, sixes are intelligence, sevens are faith, and eights are arcane. With the dragon runes, we get a pretty great start honestly. 8 Vigor, 5 Mind and Endurance, 2 Strength, 3 Dexterity and Intelligence, 2 Faith, and 6 Arcane. All I really want is Vigor right now. 18 isn't ideal, but it's still technically our best stat. Fort Faroth can help us out a little bit with the Golden Rune for another level, and Radigan's Sword Seal to boost our Vigor, Endurance, Strength, and Dexterity by 5, while increasing our damage taken by 15%. Then we got another Arcane. This is gonna be a, uh, 
a weird dude. I still don't really know what this build is gonna need, so let's just go grab something that's gonna be good no matter what stats we get. Flame of the Red Mains from the Tanjiro and the Leo Fotia runs. With an Ash of War this good, I'd main red too. You have to chase an invisible teardrop scarab in Kaled, which can be a bit of a chore, at least it is for me. Good for you if you're good at finding the invisible thing, but I suck at it. Still, I eventually got it. Then I bought a dagger for the quick step. It's cheaper than buying the quick step Ash of War. I guess the twin maiden really just wanted to get rid of this dagger, that seems kind of sus. Since the Ashes of War scale with your weapons level, let's head to Lernia and run around in circles for smithing stones and other things, like two fingers deep in this hole, which boost your faith. Trust me, I wouldn't just put two fingers in a hole for fun. Then some stones behind these fart monsters, some silver foul foots for boosted item discovery, and stones by the broken bridge and lobster. Took a brief detour from my stone quest to fight Dialos and get the Hoslo Petal Whip from the Ivy Run. It's a decent weapon with bleed and reach, but unless I get a lot more dexterity, I'm gonna stick to the Morning Star, just because it does a bit more stance damage. Then some stones on a corpse, buy some flowers, in a hut, buy some flowers, stones by lobsters, stones that aren't on the map, stones, stones, and a stop at the Bellum Highway Grace. It's close to a sacred tier in the Bellum Church, and it's a nice cross section to head into the Ruin Strewn Precipice, into Raya Lucaria, or the Raya Lucaria Crystal Cave if we need more stones. For now, we have enough to level up the Morning Star. This first section was actually at the tail end of the last Sephiroth stream, so we didn't get super Super far. But I wanted to bully Patches really quick, so let's take out Nerd Juice first, then head into the cave and kill Patches. We could let him live, but killing him gives us leather armor and a plus seven spear, plus a bell bearing to take to the round table hold that'll let us buy his inventory. You lose nothing with the murder, other than the candlestick whip, and that's got a lot of requirements. I'm not sure we're gonna get that with random stats. It's also not super good. Stream 2, we kick it off with the Ruin Strewn Oedipus, your favorite mother trucking level in the game. I forgot I was using a fire weapon, and then the miner exploded, so hey, if you want to have fun fighting miners, hit them with fire. Red Mane's Flame is also great for clearing out bats, so I don't have to worry about getting knocked off the ladder. Scooped up the Serpent God's Curved Sword on the way up. Now I could Power Stance that with the Sham Shear. It also would heal us a bit when we kill enemies. But for now, it's not really worth it to invest in something other than the Morning Star. Before doing that, though, I snuck around to grab the Lost Ashes of War in case I decide to power stance bleed weapons like in the Moon Knight run. Before stomping the Magma Worm, I went after the Clean Rot Knights in the Abandoned Cave. They're weak to fire, and we have a plus 12 fire weapon with debatably the best fire ash of war in the game. It took less than a minute, barely more than 30 seconds, and gives us the Golden Scarab Talisman, boosting experience gains by 20%. We need all the runes we can get because I want 40 vigor by the end of this. We actually get vigor from our next level up. Hooray! Considering we have a 1 in 8 chance of getting bigger, we need a lot of levels. Let's get to leveling. First, I take on the Putrid Avatar in Kaled, which is very weak to fire, so Flame of the Red Mains just deletes it. The runes it drops give us Mind and Intelligence, not really all that helpful, but it also drops the Flame Shrouding Tear, which boosts fire damage by 20%. Flame of the Red Mains is fire damage. Next up is Margit, who is- wait, Margit isn't dead yet? Oh, we're taking it slow and steady. Here's a good demonstration of why Flame of the Red Mains is so good stance damage. Generally, it can break a boss's stance in three to four hits, while also dealing pretty decent damage, covering a big area and coming out very fast. Relatively fast, at least. The casting speed is going to become an issue later, but since we're at plus 12 and Margit is meant to be a very early boss, it's fast enough here. On the other side of the Stormvale Gatekeeper is Gostok, who keeps the second gate, but can also open it. Thanks, Gostok. I killed him out of gratitude because I wanted his bell bearing. I guess I could have just taken a few steps for his quest, but that's a pain in the butt. I do want the hook claws from the slower path since they bleed really fast and our arcane is pretty high. We use them in our very first run. Wolverine, it feels like it was so long ago. Oh, and we level up once. It's more arcane. Bleed definitely seems like the move. Now I start making my way into Altus and the Magma Worm is an easy boss that drops a decent amount of runes from the top of the Ruin Strewn Oedipus. It heavily resists fire damage, but our flame will still break its stance. This is also where we take our first two deaths though. I got body blocked into the lava. It can happen. This fight is like running across a highway at one in the morning. You're probably gonna be fine, but if you get hit, you're getting hit. Since I forgot the pickles, we can only afford two levels, mind and fate. I want vigor. Since putrid avatars are weak to fire, the one in the dragon barrow is the obvious next target. Sure, it can delete me in one hit since our vigor is so low, so we did die once. But the flame of the red mains just deletes its HP and gives us an end game level of runes. That'll give us dexterity, intelligence twice, arcane, strength, endurance, strength, strength again, vigor baby, vigor, arcane, and that's it. 
Into Altus, obviously we bullied Gilka in like 10 seconds for the Ritual Sword Talisman. We've used it in every single run, I think. 10% extra damage at full HP. Doesn't matter if you're using weapons or spells. It works for everything. Since Gilka doesn't give us enough runes to level up, I dove into the Altus Tunnel for some more stones. One of the miners dropped the Digger Staff. I can't wait to use those stone digger sorceries. Uh, we're, so we're not. After absolutely eviscerating the Crystallian duo with the Red Main Flame, we have enough runes to level up once. It's faith. That's not vigor. For enough smithing stone fives to level up to the next tier, we need to get to the Celia Crystal Tunnel, warping through some ruins in Limgrave. I'll be totally honest, I don't know where the real entrance is. It's full of Spider-Mans and they hit really hard. Grab the smithing stones I could and the Faith's Canvas Talisman for boosted incantations if I decide to use any. The Falling Star Beast isn't that tough. It goes down to a few red main flames, then gives us the other Somberstone Bell Bearing, so now we can buy one through four. We get enough runes to level up twice, Intelligence and Mind. Neither of those are the vigor I need. Exicus is right on the way to Radon, so let's burn him down. That's good for three levels, arcane strength and mind. Still no vigor. Into the red main castle for Jaren's party. With our low vigor, we're in trouble. Radon can break our face on the double. I died, we're done, that's it for me, but I could get it done on attempt number three. And we're rewarded with levels in dexterity, arcane, faith, vigor, strength, and faith again. If you're saying I play favorites, you're wrong. I love all my children equally. I don't care for faith. One shard bearer dead, but I don't want to wait too long before our second shard. Getting through the danger path of Stormvale is trickier. Usually I have more vigor when I run through here, but we still did fine. Godric is at the end, but with the power of the red main flame, it takes less than a minute. Just break the stance, stab the face, it's so powerful. We get more endurance and intelligence, which are not vigor, god dang it. While we don't technically need three shard bearers, extra runes mean potentially more vigor, so there's some nice stuff in the Raya Lucaria Academy. We also don't need to kill Smarag to get the key, but I'm no coward. Into the Raya Lucaria Academy, lots of dogs in here. There's even a big dog. I can't call him Clifford in any other run. So since this isn't attached to another piece of media, let's kill Clifford. He jumps around enough that it's actually a little tricky, but we get it at another level to go for some strength not vigor. I wanted the Radigan icon, which boosts up spell casting time, in case there are spells I want to use later. Moongrim really isn't a problem, I'm feeling pretty confident, so I just head up to Renala after that. We one cycle her in the first phase, so the damage is absolutely crapped. But she took us out in phase two, and we didn't get the shortcut. So next time up, popped the shortcut, but that time I didn't need it since we won anyway. And I got two levels of vigor in mind. Honestly, this was kind of a waste of time, but we could waste even more time. Why? Why do you go wasting your time? Ronnie quest into Caria Manor. Kill Loretta, talk to Ronnie, down the hole, grab some glove wart, kill the mimic tier. Ooh, level up, mind this time. Grab the mimic tier ashes, then ghost glove wart 10 and the finger slayer blade. Get the carrion statue, flip the study hall, grab the death mark, go back underground, say hi to phalanx from demon's holes, grab the archer ashes, dodge the boulder, and grab the last glove warts. We actually do go a bit further into Ronnie's quest this time than we normally do. We don't always fight the Baleful Shadow, but since he has boss posture and not NPC posture, Flame of the Red Mains makes it totally free. The Lake of Rot is much scarier since I've never ran through here with less than 40 vigor, so not only do we get rotted faster, but we have less health to survive the rot. The hardest boss we've fought so far in this game is a lake. Thankfully, we make it and can head down the Rotterfall to fight Estelle. He does a ton of damage with all of his attacks, but the grab is straight up brutal. He teleports because behind you and says nothing personnel before crunching us. I wonder if this is what my pickles feel like. Second time though, I'm firing on every cylinder, getting a stance break fast, dodging attacks like it's nobody's business. He also gives us a lot of runes. We get levels in strength, faith, strength, and endurance. That's not vigor. Up the elevator, we go to the Moonlight Altar. It's a lovely place. The boss up here is not as lovely, the Black Knife Assassin Electo. She's gatekeeping the Spirit Ashes for Black Knife Tish. Probably the best Spirit Ash we've used yet from the Link Run. Electo is kind of a problem though. She's too fast for the Flame of the Red Mains most of the time, and so aggressive you can't even run away. She's also got a mini Malaketh explosion that will kill us in one hit. But because we haven't gotten any bigger, it's a brutal pain. 
After four deaths, we have to move on to something else. There's a death right bird in Kaled. That's much easier. Definitely not easy, but still easier. Its attacks are really sporadic. It's hard to know when this skinny little reanimated pile of chicken bones is gonna do next. But I only died once. Then it dropped the death's poker we used in the Riku run. The Ash of War on that thing is absolutely bananas, but we need to level it up first. Also, might as well grab the pocket from the round table hold. For the runes for the poker, I take it to Grail and the Dragon Barrow, but we have no vigor, so it takes it to us twice. Then we kill it and get enough runes to level up the death's poker and enough to level up three more times. Arcane, strength, and arcane. Shit. We have to use the intelligence talisman to get the requirements for the death's poker, but bringing it back to Electo, it's barely helpful, I guess. The weapon art puts up some ghost flame that you can explode with a big ol' kaboom that'll knock people on their ass, or you can send out a line of ghost flame. All of that applies frostbite for 5% total health damage and lowers their defense, but Electo's just too goddamn fast, I swear. She also figures out how to dodge things in the middle of the fight like no other boss does. And we don't have enough health to survive very long. After 11 total deaths, I decided this wasn't worth it, let's go do do anything else. I killed a Tibia Mariner, and then we leveled up the Mimic tier. That was a mistake. A mistake we were about to suffer for. The Draconic Tree Sentinel is a great showcase for why I should not have leveled the Mimic tier. If you don't have 40 Vigor, do not use the Mimic tier because the Mimic tier will also not have 40 Vigor and it will die. I should have grabbed Angval, Dean, Oleg, Flo, Latena, Ludl, Oga, Kristoff, or literally any of the puppets. But I already had the Mimic Ashes, so instead of fighting some like level one boss, I just powered through. And I lost to the Tree Sentinel three times before finding the Rhythm. The Rhythm is two red mains for a stance break, then a bonk on the nose, and repeating that over and over again until the Draconic Tree Sentinel is dead and never had an opportunity to attack us. Running through the Lindale capital, I killed the Urge Tree Avatar for enough runes to level up. Just dexterity, that's not vigor. The Godfrey Shade is no match for the Red Main Flame, and we are rewarded with two intelligence and one strength. Morgoth's also not that bad with the Red Main Flame, and we're rewarded with strength, endurance, faith, and vigor. See, we're at a point where if you don't have 30 vigor, a lot of attacks straight up one-shot you. We're kind of like the Sands build, but with better stance damage and less actual damage. Wendy wants us to burn down the Urge Tree. I decided Melina is Wendy from Wendy's this time because I can do whatever I want. This is my story, and apparently Wendy's is a part of it, even though it always gives me a tummy ache. It's like a forbidden treat, and we're riding through the forbidden lands to get to the mountaintops of the giants. Up there, we can grab the Smithing Stone Bell Bearing 3 to level up the Morning Star, but more real Realistically, we're leveling up the red mains. It's just so good. Since our next boss resists fire damage though, I go back to the Lernia Lakes for the Blood Flame Blade, just adding some extra bleed to our Morning Star. I guess I should say the next mandatory boss resists fire, since we did fight an Urge Tree Avatar in the Mountaintops first. It's actually weak to fire and doubles its hurt box halfway through the fight, so with our massive line of flame, it's pretty much free levels. Unfortunately, those levels are in Endurance, which we didn't need. Then we'll take on the biggest Lebowski, the Fire Giant. He has a hot temper and way too much goddamn health. It takes over five full minutes, but eventually we die. Five minutes fighting a boss in Elden Ring feels like an eternity. So to make it faster next time, I grabbed the Rot Breath incantation to afflict this large lad with the Lictu disease. It wasn't enough the second try, but on the third try, we ended up getting the W. We got Faith, Endurance, Dexterity, and Mind. Not really all that bad, but not all that helpful. Unfortunately, I ran out of time, so now this was gonna have to be finished in a third stream. The third stream started off pretty strong. I fell off the chain because I was distracted by chat. Whoops. Join my chat, follow me on Twitch, and you can distract me too. Burning down the Erd Tree will bring us to Crumbling Faram Azula, where we can avoid everything to make it to the grace I learned about from the comment section. After seeing that comment and how helpful it was, I started looking at the comments again for the first time in months. That lasted about two days. Leave a comment telling me which of the godskin duo ignites your black flame. Do you like them long and lean, or do you like a short king with some meat on his bones? Given the choice myself, I'd choose death three times. Fighting the Godskin duo without any health is a really punishing experience, but eventually we're able to get through it. We get some more mind, arcane, vigor, and dexterity with the runes, but if you think the Godskin duo were bad, remember, we have four bosses left, and it can only get worse. 
right? We made the swag jump on the first try, honestly, we never really missed it anymore. After riding to where I thought the warrior jar was, I realized I forgot to visit him in the hot tub. Hey Alex, how you doing buddy? Wanna fight to the death in Faramazula? I guess that was a yes, because we did fight to the death and we won. Getting the shot of Alexander boosting our weapon arts by 15%. While in the area, I grab a somber stone 9, the dragon crest shield talisman plus 2 for some physical damage resistance, and the somber ancient dragon stone. After checking in on the great bridge grace, I go to level up all of our weapons to their maximum level. Considering all the trouble we had in the last section, I'm guessing these last bosses are gonna be brutal. The Draconic 3 Sentinel has been kind of a problem for me in the past few runs, but I also don't see how different it could be from the one outside Lindell. So I put some rod on him first and then activated the rhythm. Two red main flames, a stance break, a bop on the nose, and repeat. He gives us enough runes to level up again. This time, Fate decides we need dexterity. Neat. His armor makes us look like Spongebob. Neater. Spongebob build went. Malekith is gonna suck. I start the fight by bringing out the Mimic Tear and send out two red main flames. That breaks his stance so we can apply some rot, and then I hit two more red mains and we're in phase two. I start that off with two more red main flames breaking its stance, then the Mimic Tear rots him and I ghost flame exploded him. All told, it takes one minute, 20 seconds. Rad. We warp to the Ashen Capital and I level up Faith three times, Dexterity and Strength once. Not that I chose, that was actually the D8 from Google. Google. Sir Gideon Offnir actually kills us more than Malekith did. That's only once. I'm the one Gideon Offnir defender. The dude hits so fucking hard, so if you don't have 40 vigor, he's just not gonna give you a lot of opportunities to live. But we're still able to clear him out since he has almost no HP. We got some strength, intelligence, and vigor for our trouble. Godfrey time, this guy does not fuck around. He can legitimately tear you in half in phase two, and not in a hot way. Well, you'll die at least. Phase 1 goes pretty smoothly, but Phase 2 is where Daddy hangs his hat. I'm able to get a stance break off with two red main flames, so then I apply the rot and then break the stance again. Unfortunately, he wakes up and gets the grab, throwing me into the air in a big, long animation. Except, that was all according to Keikaku, since the rot kills Godfrey. Keikaku means plan, by the way. By baiting him into a long-winded animation, the rot had enough time to kill him. I am a pro gamer. That was completely intentional, and I am riding high heading into Radagon and the Elden Beast. We even get two vigors as well as some strength, dexterity, endurance, faith, and more dexterity. But if you want 40 levels really fast, check out today's sponsor, Godric's Great Rune. Godric's Great Rune is a virtual level enhancer, boosting the performance of your tarnish with free five points in every level. If you enter offer code Tulak and Mango at the top of the Divine Tower of Limgrave, you'll get Great Rune activation for 70% off, which means it only costs one rune art. Check out Godric's Great Rune today and get started smashing the Elden Beast. Now, back to the video. With the Flame of the Red Mains, Radagon goes down pretty easily, probably why he's so popular with the Royal Ladies. Now, the Elden Beast is way more of a lottery. It has so many giant moves that can delete our tiny little health bar. We're still able to get a stance break off in around 20 seconds, and another one a minute later, right before he could grab us. Then, here comes the Elden Stars, our punishment for doing so well. Except, the Elden Stars don't chase me. They chase the Mimic tier. So we can break the stance one more time and beat the Elden Elden Beast with a meaty critical hit in 6 hours and 29 minutes, with 32 deaths and 33 bosses slain. With those stats, it ends up between Alucard and Batman, which overall means it's number 9 of 20, remarkably close to the middle. I honestly didn't think that would happen, but it's funny that the premise of random level ups and ideal routing did end up balancing out. Flame of the Red Mains is just a gift from the gods for PvE. It has no stat requirements, fits on just about any common weapon, gives bosses less time to attack you, and big meaty critical damage for you. Bleed is also good, Rot is also good, Frostbite is also good, so just use status effects, they're great. It's also great to watch these runs live. I do them on Twitch and we're having a lot of fun finding new ways to play Elden Ring every week. Join the Patreon if you want to give me some money, and follow my other channel if you want to see me build characters in Dungeons & Dragons in addition to Elden Ring.